Good morning. Welcome to another program of Study the Word. Every week this program is sponsored by the Kirkwood Church of Christ that meets at 948 South Geyer Road in Kirkwood, Missouri. If you're ever in the area, folks, we'd love to have you. You'd be our honored guest. You see the website there? That's for you to check out our times of services and our location if you're not familiar with the area. And of course, you can go on that website and see some of our past TV programs actually all of our past TV programs, and uh, if there's any question there is of, of interest to you, you can uh, click on it and see the Bible answer. See, that's what this program is all about. You have a Bible question, deserve a Bible answer. That's why that phone number is there for you to participate. Love to hear from you. We'll use your question on this program. Of course, we'll give you an answer right away. We can either call you or email it or text it. I'll put that number up again at the end of the program because we always offer those free Bible study helps we hope that you'll take advantage of if you haven't already. So grateful for our regular viewers. We're thankful for your kind comments. We hear from you guys all the time and we truly appreciate that as we continue to teach the Word of God. So what's this week's Bible question? This week's Bible question is, Chuck, why? Why is there so much evil in the world today? Well, that's kind of a common question you'll hear from people who think about God and think about righteousness and kind of wonder, but why? Why is there so much evil in the world? That, is, of course, is, is nothing new. It's been that way since the beginning. It's why there was a flood. Read about that in Genesis chapter 5. But I'm going to answer your question with an answer that's different than what most religious people would give you. See, last week we talked about the differences within religions and, and they do exist and because people want to twist the scriptures and they don't want to just stay with what the truth has been revealed. Now, I'm going to tell you what's not the answer why there's so much evil in the world today. The answer is not because of Adam and Eve. You would say, well, Chuck, it is because of Adam and Eve. After all, they sinned and... The reason we sin today, today is because of, of Adam and Eve. That could not be any further from the truth. And you've got to stay with me on this one because we're going to do some serious studying today to learn why there's so much evil in the world today. And we're going to learn why we can't put the blame on Adam and Eve for this. Like so many people want to say today that we have inherited Adam and Eve's sinful nature and we we um, we are born depraved or born in sin well that's what a lot of people teach that's what a lot of people believe but this program this program is called study the word of God we're going to see what the word of God has to say not what man thinks or what a majority of religious people think Let's see it, okay? So what happens here in Genesis? Well, what we find in the second chapter, you read about in the first chapter too, but in the second chapter, we find that God gave man responsibilities, gave them commands. Now, for example, look at verse 15 of Genesis chapter two. It says, then the Lord God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Then it went on to talk about that man should not be alone. But then we get into the third chapter. Okay, the third chapter. This is where Eve is tempted. So let's begin reading in verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You'll not surely die. Then, this, uh, then it says in verse 5, For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. 
So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. So let's just stop there. That, that, that's sufficient for now. Well, there's a little bit more I want to read at the end of this chapter of Genesis 3 in just a few moments. But what do we know so far? Because a lot of people want to put the blame for all the evil that is in the world today. We're going to blame Adam and Eve for it. So what happened back in the garden? God gave command. Okay? I want you to tend the garden. I want you to take care of things here. And he also told them, you know, of the tree that's in the midst of the garden. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The day that you eat it, you'll surely die. Okay, now God spoke to them. Did they understand the message? When I read in Genesis chapter 3, when the serpent came along and asked Eve, what has God said? She was correct. Which means, when God speaks, it's understandable. Not only that, when God gave the command, he told them to do things that they were capable of obeying. See, God is a just God. We need to remember that about this. See, if we lose sight of these principles that I'm talking about now, then the answers that we're going to be finding, why is there so much evil in this world today, will not suffice for some people because they haven't been taught these basic, important, fundamental facts. And we will build upon them. So we learn that God gave commands, man understood the commands, and man had the ability to obey those commands. But the fact that man had the ability to obey, what's equal to that is they also had the ability to disobey. You mean God made man and woman, as we read in Genesis chapter 1, at the end of the chapter, what God created, even man and woman, he says it was good. God did not create man and woman in the beginning not good. They were good. And when God gave them the commands, there was no sin in the world. No sin at all. So man could do what is right, but man equally could do the wrong thing. What does that tell you? Well, that tells you a very important principle, and that is, that man has been given free will, that man can make a choice. Now, if man cannot make a choice, then why tell Adam and Eve to do certain things and to not do certain things? It tells them they're not puppets. They were not robots. They could hear, they could understand, and then they could choose to obey or disobey. So, for a period of time, they were doing exactly what God said. Serpent comes along and then just simply tells Eve, you will not surely die. Even though she just told him what the law was and what the consequences were. She was very much aware of that. And the fact that she took the fruit and ate it, and Adam took the fruit and ate of it, tells you what? That they both gave in to temptation. Eve looked at it, and she desired it. And then she thought about how that would make her wise. See, that's what happens when a, pe when a person sins. They give in to temptation. There are temptations all around us, all around us. There would have been the temptation to not tend the garden and not keep it. There would have been the temptation, which we already see, that when God said, don't eat of it, there would have been the temptation to go eat it. Okay, so what we find in chapter 3 is they went ahead and did that. So here's my question, and it's really important that we get this, because a lot of people miss this. So Adam and Eve, who were created without sin, how come they sinned? I mean, here's people, two people that were had never sinned, that were innocent, that were truly innocent, yet they broke God's law. They, they disobeyed what God said. 
Were they born in sin? Were they born depraved? Did they have a sinful nature? That you know, is this God's fault within all of this? No, not at all. Well, then, how come they sin? Because they gave into temptation. That's all. This isn't. This isn't that complicated, folks. If you have a Bible or you want to listen, we were reading back here in Genesis. Okay, Genesis, the third chapter. I'm going to go all the way now to the book of James in the New Testament. And the reason I'm going to the book of James, because James tells us how sin comes about. And we haven't forgotten the question of the day. The question is, why is there so much evil in the world today? Okay, good question. But in James chapter 1, it says in verse 14, well, let's meet, let, me get, let me read verse 13 of James 1. It says, let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. God doesn't tempt anyone. God was not tempting Adam and Eve. People might say, well, he gave them a command. Well, yeah, he told them, you know, here's what I want you to do, so do it. Well, it's God's fault because God was tempting them to, to not do it. No, he wasn't. He gave them law. Now let's read on. Verse 14, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire hath conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Now, before I comment on those couple of verses, do you know what James said at the first of this? In James chapter 1, he talks about, in verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. You know, we face a lot of trials and temptation. But temptation is not a sin. Now, that's really important in answering the question, why is there so much evil in the world? Well, first of all, God created man, gave them rules, they broke the rule. They weren't created, it, um, they weren't created with a sinful nature, they weren't born in sin, Adam and Eve weren't. Why did they sin? Okay, we're talking about that. So that's why we went over to James chapter 1, and we're talking about the fact that how does sin come about? Well, when they give in to temptation. But right now we're saying, wait a minute, temptation though, temptation is not sin. It's when you give in to temptation, that's when it brings forth sin, which brings forth death. Death means a separation, which is what happened with Adam and Eve, because people say, well, Adam and Eve really didn't die. Well, yeah, it's, death is a separation. We're not talking about physical, it's spiritual. Sin, on a spiritual level. We know we could sin and, and hurt ourselves physically, but the point is, we're talking about the spiritual consequences for sin, and he talks about it here in James chapter 1. So when you go back to the garden, and this is important, when you go back to the garden and people say, well, how come Adam and Eve sinned when they were created pure and innocent? The answer is, they were given free will, and they chose to disobey God. They gave in to temptation. All right. Having said that, somebody says now, Chuck, how do you explain why there's so much sin in the world today? Well, let's compare it back to the time before the flood. How bad were things on the earth that caused the flood? Well, here I am. I'm going to I'm in Genesis. I'm in the the 6th chapter. And notice what it says here in verse 5. It says, "Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of uh of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually." Now notice verse 6. And the Lord was sorry that he even made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Well, God, why, why would you be grieved if you made man with a sinful nature? Why, you know, why would you blame them if it was actually Adam and Eve's fault? Well, it wasn't Adam and Eve's fault, because, you know, 
the part that I want us to remember back in Genesis chapter 3, when remember when Adam and Eve sinned? Do you know what happened when God confronted them? He told them, you know, well, let's, let's see, let's, let's check out the conversation between God and Adam and Eve. It said uh, in verse 8, and I'm back in Genesis chapter 3, it says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, well, the woman that you gave to me, she gave me of the tree and I ate it. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me. See what's happening here? <laughs> Things haven't changed. It's her fault. It's his fault. Blaming somebody else. Always blaming somebody else. So, having said that, what was going on in the world? Well, we were over in Genesis chapter 6. Remember, it said that um, the Lord was sorry that he even made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. Well, God, you made him. Yes, God made man, but he made man with the ability to do the right thing, but he gave man free will. Okay, now look what happened. In verse 7, it said, So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But notice it says here, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amongst all that evil, there was a good man. So when somebody says, Chuck, why is there so much evil in the world today? Well, we're answering that. But I also want you to understand something. Everybody is not. But yes, yes, there is a lot of evil in this world. There's, there's no question. There's a lot of people doing things that are ungodly, but that's nothing new, folks. Now, the person is asking the question as to, but why? Well, the why is easy. The why is because man is choosing to do what he wants to do rather than what God wants him to do. That's, that's the problem we have today in this world. So when you read a passage like Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, when it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, what does that mean? All people have given into transgression. It isn't that all people have been born in sin. The Bible doesn't teach that we're born in sin. You say, well, Chuck, haven't you read Psalm 51? No, no, no. The point there was that Paul, or uh, excuse me, David was talking about, you know, you're, you're conceived into a world of sin. We, get, we understand that. But we, we also understand the fact that from Ezekiel chapter 18 and in verse 20, it says, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father nor the father bear the iniquity of the son. So you can go right back. You can go right back to Genesis and know that Cain did not kill his brother because of his father, Adam. Why? Because the scripture tells us, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, nor the father of the son. And so I'm not guilty if my father did something, and if my father did something, you know, bad, I'm not guilty. My dad robbed a bank. They're not throwing me in prison. I, did, I didn't do anything. Now, I could suffer consequences, and I think, really, we should mention uh, or take a little bit of time to mention that suffering consequences doesn't mean you're suffering the guilt. Obviously, people suffer consequences. Was there some consequences with Adam and Eve being kicked out of the garden? Yeah, we don't have access to that tree of life. Guess what? We all grow old and we die. Adam and Eve were made mortal. When they were kicked out of the garden, they weren't allowed to come back into the garden and eat that tree of life. As long as they ate that tree of life, they, would, they wouldn't die. Kicked out of the garden, what happened? They grew old and they died. How come you and I grow old? Well, it's Adam and Eve's fault. No, we grow old and die because we don't have access to that tree of life. Now, the book of Revelation talks about the concept of the tree of life spiritually that we can have and we can live forever with God if we live faithfully for him. 
So we understand this idea that we're talking about here when it comes to um, not inheriting guilt. So Cain kills his brother. Why? Because he was angry. He, was ang he got angry with God because God didn't accept his worship. He got angry with, with Abel because Abel's uh, worship was acceptable. Jealousy, hatred, there's a lot of reasons why people sin, why people give in to temptation. We're being tempted on all points. But the point is, for you and I, is that everybody is given into temptation because we made that choice. Now, this is really important to get because Romans 6 and verse 23 says, the wages of sin is death. There are consequences for our sin. And if every sin has a consequence, then that means I'm accountable for everything that I've done. I can never say I had to sin. Can't say that. I could have resisted, but I chose not to. So everybody gives in to sin at one time or another. People say, why? Because that was their choice. They chose to do that. It's not Adam and Eve's fault that there's so much evil in the world today. Folks, go back to the garden. There was just two people there. You could say, when, the, when those two people sinned, you could say, wow, why is there so much evil in the world today? Well, there was only two of them, but that was all the people that was in the world at that time, was the two of them, and they, they both sinned. Now, during Noah's time, there was a lot more than two people but you could see how goodness can prevail even amongst a world of wickedness, which is hope for you and me. Because even though there's a lot of evil in the world today, you and I do not have to be. Hey, well, wait a minute, Chuck, you said we all sin. Yes, but this is why we can have hope by recognizing the fact and admitting to the fact that we have been guilty of our transgressions and we're not blaming our parents or those parents or all the way back to Adam and Eve. We've owned up to the fact that we have given in to sin and we need forgiveness. And it ultimately, it's because of Jesus Christ we can have it. It's another lesson, but we're answering the question, why is there so much evil in the world today? It's because man chooses to do what he wants to do. What's in the world? 1 John chapter 2, 15 and 16 tells us of what's in the world. It tells us don't love the world. What's in the world? The lust of the flesh the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Every transgression you could ever think of comes under one of those three categories. And people are doing what they want to do. Now, there's a lot of people out there who have sinned, who don't sin as bad as other people, so to speak. Because, you know, we, we have a tendency to think in big sins and little sins. I've never murdered anybody and, or, or whatever. Um, but the fact of the matter, we've all either said something wrong, done something wrong, thought something wrong, didn't do something that we should have done. It is easy to sin. But the reason why there's punishment is because we're accountable. It's always our fault when we sin. But we are thankful that we have a God that can forgive us. He's put in place a way for us to have forgiveness of sin, that we can become Christians. And as we live in this world, there are times when we do stumble from time to time, but we can grant, get forgiveness. And that's what we're talking about, his grace and his mercy. And you and I need to recognize that. That's why we need to come to the Lord. Yes, the majority of this world is going to remain evil, just like in Noah's time. It was Jesus himself that said, there's a narrow road that leads to life, and few there be that find it in Matthew 7. But he said, there's a broad road that leads to destruction, and there are many going down that road. It's the same that happened back in Genesis chapter 6 is what's going to happen at the end of time. The majority of the people of this world will choose to do what they want to do. They gave into temptation. Oh, they may have stopped doing some of the evils they did when they were younger, when they were sowing their wild oats, so to speak. But the point is, doing a lot of good things never cover up for the wrong that we've done we need our sins remitted. We need to come to Jesus. And that's one of the reasons why we offer the, the six lesson home Bible study course, folks, because it deals with how do we get covered by the blood. But it starts out with fundamentals about the Bible. And what's really interesting is lesson number two in the six lesson course 
deals exactly with what we talked about today. And you can read all the verses that are in that lesson about the origin of sin and are we born in sin. And, and you can have, if you didn't take notes today, you'll have a copy of it. And so these lessons really get to the heart of the issue of things that we need to know and they provide answers for questions that we maybe not even thought of. Like, oh yeah, yeah, that, okay. And we, we learn. And we want you to become familiar with the scriptures. Get your Bibles open at home. And we'll be glad to, to, to send this lesson to you. And when you're finished with it, put it in the envelope. Send it back. And we'll check it over. Just to make sure you have things right. Because sometimes what happens with these courses is that people neglect to read the verses and they will answer according to the way they've been taught rather than just staying with the Word of God. If you stay with the Scriptures, you're going to be fine. And so, once you're finished with it, we check it over and we return it to you so you can hold on to it for future reference along with your next lesson. So we'll be glad to mail that first lesson out to you. Leave your name and your address. I love the fact that many of our viewers when they leave it on voicemail, they go ahead and they spell their names. And if it's a, a street that's not um, easy to remember or to pronounce, they go ahead and they spell that out too. And so we appreciate that and we hope that you'll enroll in that free Bible course. Or if you would like a face-to-face -face Bible study, that can be arranged too. We can do that at the church building at your home. Um, and if you're a lady, I'll bring my wife with me or some others, make you feel comfortable. We have some classes where some men meet at the church building. Some ladies meet at the church building on a different day. If you'd like to join those classes, just let me know and we'll let you know what time we meet there. We just study for an hour and, um, and then everyone goes back home. And so if you'd like to engage in those small study groups, please let us know. Uh, and we'll be glad to welcome you into those studies. If you'd like to be put on the mailing list for our weekly bulletin, please let us know with that too. A lot of people are, are just doing that. They're saying, Chuck, you know, send me the course and go ahead and put my name on the mailing list for the, for the uh, weekly bulletin. And they re request those free two pamphlets. I'm, I'm putting a lot of those pamphlets in the Bible course that we mail out. The 40 things that people think in the Bible are, but, but are not. And the 30 things that are in the Bible that people say, it's not, but they really are. And so if you would like those two pamphlets, request them. And again, there's no charge for any of those things. Folks, this has been brought to you by the Kirkwood Church of Christ. It meets at 948 South Geyer Road right there in Kirkwood. Please come. Check us out. Uh, come by and visit with us. And we'd like to meet you face to face. We thank you for, for watching this program. Tell others about it because you know what we do every week. We deal with a Bible question. If you have one, let us know. And we'll be back here next week at the same time. And we will deal with a Bible question that's on the minds of other people. And chances are it's on your mind too. So join us in our studies. And like I say, please come and be with us if you ever get a chance to be in the Kirkwood area. Thank you and have yourselves a great day.